ഹായ് ഐ എം പ്രീത രഘുനാഥ് വെൽക്കം ടു മൈ ചാനൽ ഫോർ എം എസ് സി അപ്ലൈഡ് സൈക്കോളജി ലെസൺസ് ദിസ് ലെസൺസ് ആർ ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ ഭാരതീയർ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റീസ് ഫസ്റ്റ് ഇയർ അപ്ലൈഡ് സൈക്കോളജി ഐ ഹാഡ് സീൻ എ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഇൻ ജൂൺ ടു തൗസൻഡ് എയ്റ്റീൻ ഫസ്റ്റ് ഇയർ എം എസ് സി അഡ്വാൻസ്ഡ് ജനറൽ സൈക്കോളജി പേപ്പർ ദ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ വോസ് ഇലാബറേറ്റ് ദ സ്ട്രക്ചർ ആൻഡ് ഫംഗ്ഷൻസ് ഓഫ് വിഷ്വൽ സിസ്റ്റം സോ ലെറ്റ്സ് ഡിസ്കസ് അബൌട്ട് ഹ്യൂമൻ ഐ സ്ട്രക്ചർ ആൻഡ് ഫംഗ്ഷൻസ് ഓഫ് എ ഹ്യൂമൻ ഐ ഹ്യൂമൻ ഐ ഈസ് സ്പെറിക്കൽ ഇൻ ഷേപ്പ് ദിസ് ഇസ് സ്പെറിക്കൽ ഇൻ ഷേപ്പ് ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് കൺസിസ് ഓഫ് ഔട്ടർ ലെയർ വിച്ച് ഇസ് എ ഫൈബ്രസ് കോട്ട് വിച്ച് കൺസിസ് ഓഫ് സ്ക്ലീറ ആൻഡ് കോർണിയ and there is a middle layer which is a vascular coat which consists of choroid ciliary body and iris and there is an inner layer which is a nervous coat which consists of retina let us see each of these layers in detail outer coat of the eye is called the cornea at the anterior side and sclera at the posterior side this cornea is transparent that means it allows the light to pass through it whereas the sclera is opaque it will not allow the light to pass through cornea helps to protect the inner parts of the eye from accidents and also doesn't allow dust or foreign bodies to enter inside cornea also helps to refract the light there is another uh, thin membranous tissue that is known as conjunctiva conjunctiva is a thin clear membranous tissue that covers the sclera and the inner inside of the upper and lower eyelids it keeps the eye and inner eyelids moist and lubricated another function of the conjunctiva is to protect the eye from dust debris and microorganisms since it contains many Uh, blood vessels it provides nutrients to the eye and eyelids it contains special cells to work with the tear film and prevents dry eye syndrome you might have heard about conjunctivitis which is the inflammation of the conjunctive conjunctiva which is known as pink eye or red eye red eye and it is very common so behind the cornea there is a dark uh, mus- muscular structure known as iris that belongs to the middle layer middle layer consists of choroid at the posterior side and iris and ciliary body at the anterior side iris determines the color of the eye that means the brown eyed person has brown iris and a blue eyed person has blue colored iris uh, a pigment known as melanin determines the color of the eye there is a space filled with a transparent watery fluid in between the cornea and the lens that fluid is known as aqueous humor aqueous humor helps to maintain the pressure in the eye and also nourishes the cornea there is a black hole at the center of the iris that is known as pupil this is for the light to enter into the inner eye the size of the pupil pupil get adjusted by the iris to regulate the amount of light entering into the inner eye the pupil will get constricted in bright light and will get dilated in dim light through the pupil the light enters the lens lens is biconvex 
it is also a converging lens. That means it focuses the image at a point. In a normal eye, the focus will be on the retina. If the person has some vision problems, the focus will be either in front of the retina or behind the retina. The lens is kept in place by ciliary muscles. These muscles have a very important function. If we are looking at a far away object, the required power to converge the light will be less and thus the lens will get flattened or thinner. If we are looking at a closer object, the power to converge the light will be more and thus the lens will get thicker. This contraction or relaxation of the ciliary muscles to change the shape of the lens to get the light focused in the retina is known as accommodation. The innermost layer is known as the retina. Retina contains a lot of nerve cells. There are two types of nerve cells known as rods and cones. Cones are sensitive to bright light and rods are sensitive to dim light. These nerve cells convert light into electric impulses. Then uh, these electric impulses transfer to the brain through the optic nerve. Our brain receives these electrical impulses and thus perceives from where that light comes from and thus it constructs the image of the world around us. Space between the lens and the retina is filled with a transparent jelly-like substance called vitreous humor. It helps maintaining the shape of our eye. Light waves traverses through cornea to the pupil then to the lens and from lens to uh, get focused to the retina. Retina has a lot of rods and cones. Almost uh, 120 million rods and 6 million cones in each eye. So from this rods and cones the light is get transmitted to gang bipolar cells. And then from bipolar cells it will go to ganglion cells. Ganglion cells will uh, summarize the information and uh, then uh, from ganglion cells the information will pass through the optic nerves to the brain. So the bipolar cells receive the information from nerve cells and transmit it to the ganglion cells. The ganglion cells in turn collect this visual information, summarizes it and moves it out of the back of the eyeball through the optic nerve. The optic nerve is a bundle of ganglion axons that are located in the back of the eyeball that carry information to the brain. The opening of the optic nerve pushes through the retina. Hence, there are no rods or cones in that area which is hence called the blind spot. Since we automatically compensate for the missing part of our field of vision, the absence of nerve cells in the blind spot does not actually interfere with the vision. Optic nerve from each of the eye meets at a point between the two eyes and splits here. This point of crossing over is called optic chiasm. At the optic chiasm, the optic nerve fibers carrying information from the sides of the retina closer to the nose cross over to the other side. This coming uh, impulses coming from closer to the nose on both eyes cross over to the other side of the brain. While those carrying information from the sides of the retina closer to the temples remain on the same side of the brain. 
so uh, this information coming from the temporal side of the retina will go to the same side of the brain to summarize pupil will get dilated in dimmer light to allow more light to enter and will get constricted in brighter light lens helps to focus the light on the retina by adjusting its own thickness this process is called accommodation distance objects needs a relatively flat lens then the closer objects the images uh, are formed inverted in the retina but uh, when it reaches to the brain it will again become upright retina converts electromagnetic energy of the light into useful information for the brain retina is a thin layer of nerve cells that is located at the back of the eyeball retina has two kinds of receptor cells known as rods and cones rods work well in dim light they are not sensitive to color and the small details cones are involved in color vision and work well in bright light cones also help us to make sharp focus the cones are concentrated to the greatest degree at a point in the retina called fovea This is a very sensitive region in the retina that helps in focusing of images. The cones in the retina are sensitive to the yellow green part of the spectrum of light. If all the colors are tested in normal daylight then yellowish green appears to be the brightest. Rods however are not sensitive to color yet they seem to be sensitive to blue green lights. at night or when there is a dim illumination the brightest colored light would be blue or blue green okay thank you